Good afternoon, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Pac-Man Museum Plus for the Nintendo Switch. This is a collection of 14 Pac-Man games of varying degrees of quality. So ultimately, if you want to get this game or not, it's going to depend on how much you like the games. However, one thing that makes this collection a little bit more interesting than a typical game compilation is that you can also create your own Pac-Man arcade. You can select the background, you can choose your own music, you can unlock music from the actual games themselves to play in an in-game soundtrack player over time, and you can also move around the various arcade machines and furniture in a similar way to how you would do the Animal Crossing houses. And eventually guests will show up in the arcade, which you sadly can't interact with, but I guess it's to create the illusion that more people are walking around in an arcade. Now, you have a limited amount of coins that you use to both play the arcade games and also to buy new figurines from the vending machine. This never seemed to work for me, as it would always say that I could buy new stuff, but I either already had it, or it wouldn't update the menu. So I don't know, maybe I just didn't understand the instructions well enough. So I think it's definitely cool that you can customize your own arcade, but there's not much you can do in it. It's really small, and even though you can walk up to the arcade machines and start playing the games, you don't have to do that. You can also just select the games from a menu. Each game has leaderboards and missions that you can do to get more coins and also to unlock new bonus features such as more wallpaper, more furniture, and more songs for the jukebox. You can even unlock original compositions that were made just for this collection as a particularly cool incentive for completionists. And the missions fill in the void of the Switch lacking achievements. I personally don't really like all of this completionist stuff, I just want to play the games and get it over with. So speaking of games, let's jump right into the game selection. Now normally I like to, huh, so much for jumping right in, normally I like to give my verdict at the end as to whether you should buy it or rent it or whatnot, but I think it's all going to depend on how much you like the games. So after I finish describing them, then you can decide for yourself if you think the quality of some of them is worth getting the whole package, or if you want the entire thing with all of the games. So until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Now let's get into those games for real this time. I'm pretty sure this is a given, but like every collection of Pac-Man games kinda has to have the original Pac-Man, because that's what started it all. And this is actually the arcade version. I know some people complained that the NES version lacked features, so if you want the authentic experience with the original artwork of Pac-Man intact, this is the version for you. You move around in one maze, trying to eat dots, which I like to assume are the countless quarters that were dumped into the arcade machine that Pac-Man is just raking in the money, and you'll have to watch out for ghosts. And you can fight back against the ghosts if you eat a big pellet, otherwise known as a power pellet, which turns the ghosts blue, and it causes them to run away from you. And if you eat the ghosts when they're blue, then they go into the cage in the middle. Once you eat all the dots, then you just reset the maze, but the ghosts are faster and have better AI. There's also some cutscenes to view, which for the time were great, but nowadays... They don't give enough incentive to just keep playing the same map over and over again. Pac-Man was a timeless classic for its time, but when there's several other great games to pick, this one is just neat for like a quick round or two, and then you move on to the bigger and better titles in the collection. Super Pac-Man ditches the pellets and has a new maze, and this time has Pac-Man eating fruit to clear the stage. However, the fruits are locked behind gates, and you can get through them in two different ways. You can either grab the keys to unlock them, or you can grab a Super Pac-Man pellet so that he becomes giant and he can crash through the stage and he's also invulnerable to ghosts. Of course, there's still power pellets that you can get if you want to turn the ghosts blue and have them run away from you. So it's nice enough. 
that you can deal with the ghosts in multiple ways, but I think the biggest thing hindering this game for me was the controls. There's a lot of tight corridors and not much room to move around, and it just feels like, especially when he was super Pac-Man, I just could not get Pac-Man to go where I wanted him to go. Not only that, but it's not too much different than the arcade original, which I didn't like too much to begin with, and this is just honestly kind of worse. Like, maybe it's just the maze design, maybe it's just the fact that the fruits are more spread out, but something about this just doesn't gel well with me. Pack and Pell continues the trend of just being weirder and weirder with these mazes, where this time you have to collect a bunch of fruits and special items hidden behind gates. So at least there's less stuff to pick up. But instead of collecting keys to open the gates, now you flip over cards, and the corresponding symbol will unlock that corresponding gate. Once the gate is unlocked, there's a green ghost that can steal the power-ups from you in addition to the regular ghosts, because Pac-Man just can't just leisurely stroll up to things and grab them. There's no power pellets, so you kind of just have to avoid the ghosts, but if you grab one of the ships, then Pac-Man turns blue, and that means that he can fire lasers at the ghosts to stun them. It seems like you can never just outright kill them. I guess Namco had a thing against violence. Overall, this is a pretty weird game. Like, the green ghost can steal your stuff, and after she brings them to the cage in the middle, that means that you still technically collected them, so you can win. If the enemy wins, you can also grab the items back from her at the risk of the ghosts being nearby. And there's this weird yellow centerpiece where whoever is going through that section of the maze is invisible for some reason. Yeah, this, this is a weird one. <laughs> I think this is more for historical curiosity than anything. And what is with the artwork on the side? Like, can Pac-Man actually do any of that stuff in the game? Pac-Land is a side-scrolling platformer that actually predates Super Mario Bros., and in some ways the power of the arcade did allow it to have certain touches that the NES just couldn't handle. There are very vibrant, colorful backgrounds and lots of scenic variety. You can actually see the characters' as expressions, which, you know, in Super Mario Bros., Mario is just this pixelated mess. But that's about where the positives end. It starts out as a decent platformer where you have to jump over basic obstacles and ghosts. You can actually jump on the heads of the ghosts, Super Mario Bros. 2 style, so that's nice. But you double tap the control stick to make Pac-Man move faster instead of the Pac-Man Museum Collection adding a run button. I guess they wanted it to be really authentic to the arcade version. But then, once you get to the part where water starts showing up, that's where the game starts getting really odd, because there's a diving board that you're supposed to use to make Pac-Man jump so high that he floats over the water, and I could never get that to work. Also, the part with the logs at one point soft-locked me, because the logs all fell into the chasms, so there was no way I could get across. And there's only so many lives you have, and then once you run out of lives, you get a game over. You can't insert more coins to continue, like most arcade games did, so you're plopped all the way back to the start and can't see this platformer to the end. Not that you'd want to, it's really not that good. Play it for a couple of seconds if you want to know like how the Pac-Land stage in Smash got its origins, but that's about the best joy you'll get from this. Pac-Mania is the first game in this collection that I actually really liked. It's basically an updated remake of the original Pac-Man, now with multiple different designs for the mazes, one of them looking surprisingly like Legos, and the ability to jump, which seems like such a bizarre oversight, but it adds so much to the gameplay and makes the ghosts feel far less menacing, although their AI does know how to trick you with your jumps later in the game. The music is also pretty neat. It's not just Pac-Man and the dots making noises anymore. There's actually a soundtrack. Overall, I didn't get very far in this game, but I enjoyed the time that I had. The only real problem I had is that there's a lot of screen crunch, like you can't see the maze at all times, but maybe that's so that it would be easier for you to have depth perception when jumping over the ghosts. Either way, pretty good time. I think you'll actually really like this one. And 
There's two of the songs from this game made it into Smash, so you can see their origins. Pack Attack is the first home console release in this collection, so you don't actually need to spend coins to play it. It's a puzzle game where you try to make a line out of the blocks, Tetris style, but they're usually not in very complex shapes. It's usually just in shapes of two blocks and a ghost, or three blocks in like an L shape. The real challenge of this game is trying to get Pac-Man to eat all of the ghosts. As every couple of turns, you'll get a piece that has Pac-Man in it, and he will try to eat as many ghosts as he can in a line. So you often have to know where Pac-Man will start and what direction he'll be facing, which is really frustrating in the main mode, although once you get to puzzle mode, where the levels have preset designs where you have to challenge yourself to eat all the ghosts, then you can press a button to change Pac-Man's direction, but not in the main game. The main game is just a high score grabber. You try to see how long you can survive with the patterns and the drop speed gradually increasing. Now, if you do badly enough, you'll eventually fill up the star rod on the left, and you can use a fairy clear to defeat all of the ghosts below you. So that's kind of cool, just wish it would happen more often. This game is only fun in short bursts, I found, because man did it start giving me a headache as it went along trying to figure out how to maneuver Pac-Man around while the blocks were falling. But it's it's not going to take over Tetris or anything, but it's it's a decent time waster if you're really itching for a puzzle game that has Pac-Man in it. Pac-In Time is a side-scrolling platformer, but it's very different from Pac-Land in that this encourages exploration and it also has some vertical levels. That doesn't mean it's good by any means. You have to collect every single pellet in the level. You cannot miss even one and a lot of them require very precise movements to get. At first glance, this seems like a really cool game because Pac-Man gets different power-ups, such as a fireball, a whip that lets him swing from various surfaces like Spider-Man, a hammer to pound through logs, but the controls are so twitchy, like it seems like Pac-Man will just start running when you want him to leisurely stroll, the swing mechanics, they're fun for a few seconds, but then when you're trying to get back through a hole that you fell through, you just can't seem to get the momentum right because Pac-Man will bump his head on the ceiling. The fireball usually only goes in the direction that you don't want it to go in, so you often have to force Pac-Man to walk into the enemy, and then he finally realizes, oh shoot, I should shoot something. Not to mention that the game softlocked me at one point where it was pointing to where I had to go and I went to where the pointer was and I still couldn't get past it. And I tried all the power-ups and it just would not work. So normally time traveling games like this sound cool in theory, but for Pac-Man it just doesn't work. Pac-Man Museum Plus actually has two versions of Pac-Man arrangement, one for the arcade and one for the home consoles, abbreviated as CS for some reason. The arcade version is more or less a reimagining of Pac-Man, where the dots actually dance around, Pac-Man's movement is smoother, some weird addition is that the ghosts can like merge into each other to form one big ghost, that's bizarre, and it gradually introduces new concepts to spice up the gameplay, such as dash panels that make the ghosts dizzy when you go past them, or varying levels of terrain. And it sounds really cool, but the fact is that everything is so tiny and the controls are so precise that it's actually more frustrating than fun. It's cool that Namco tried to spice up the formula, but I don't think that this amount of zooming out really did it justice. Now, to its credit, this is one of the few arcade games in the collection that actually lets you use continues, but you're probably not going to want to keep continuing if you keep running into the ghosts. Thankfully. There's another version of Pac-Man arrangement, and spoiler alert, it's way better. I actually have really fond, nostalgic memories of Pac-Man arrangement, as a buddy and I got to play through almost the entire game on the Xbox version of Namco Museum. And sadly, I had no one to test out the co-op with, but that's just such a cool concept that co-op Pac-Man is a thing. 
The reason why this is so much better than the arcade version is, one, it's not an arcade game, so you don't need any coins to play it, and two, the camera angle works so much better. Even though you're still restricted to very narrow corridors, it feels like you have more freedom of movement, and the dots are arranged in such a way that they're usually in a straight line, so it makes it clearer what the best path is to take. Not only that, but the gimmicks just feel like they're better with this kind of camera angle, like they don't feel as intrusive. Plus, unlike the arcade version, there are actually boss battles, and these are pretty cool. Admittedly, pretty much all of them boil down to grab the power pellet to make the ghosts split into smaller, go smaller ghosts, and then you eat enough of those, rinse and repeat. And the last boss has some really wacky hit detection, but apart from that, the point system actually is pretty generous and keeps refilling your extra lives. The game is also pretty short, with only about six worlds and not too many levels, but I'm actually okay with that because it doesn't overstay its welcome, and it feels like it perfected the ideas it needed to and didn't try to pad out the game. Modern games from Nintendo could learn a lesson or two from this. This is the only game in the collection that I actually completed and saw the credits for, and boy am I glad that I did, as this would be the number one reason that I picked up Pac-Man Museum Plus. I know tastes are subjective, so maybe you guys will find the other games better, but I highly recommend trying to play at least Pac-Man Arrangement in multiplayer, and you will have a blast. Pac-Man Championship Edition is an attempt to modernize Pac-Man while at the same time making it still feel like Pac-Man at the same time, as you're put into various modes that have you try to collect as many dots as possible while they keep infinitely respawning as you grab the fruit that appears when you collect enough dots. So in other words, you don't beat the level unless if you survive until the end of the timer, which ranges from 5 minutes all the way up to 10. Of course, there's ghosts and you eat them when you have a power pellet. Nothing really has changed here, besides one of the stages has a nighttime motif where you only have a certain amount of visibility. What makes it cool though is that there's a flashing beat and it just seems very stylized. But what's weird about it is that I could have sworn that I played a better version of Pac-Man Championship Edition when I reviewed Namco Museum Arcade Pack, where it was much faster and Pac-Man could eat ghost trains. Maybe that was Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 or a GX version or something, because this feels kind of plain in comparison to that version. I mean, this version's okay, but man, eating ghost trains and the music was so much better in that other version, so eh. Oh well, guess you can't have every Pac-Man game in the collection, or it would be called Pac-Man Complete Museum. Pac-Motos is one of two remixed games that were originally on Namco Museum Remix for the Wii, and you can clearly tell because this does not look like an HT game. So, Motos is a series in Japan which also got its own remix, but yet this version has Pac-Man in it, but yet the levels are nearly identical. So it's it's weird, then again, Pac-Man is weird as a whole. The point is that you control Pac-Man in spherical form, and you have to knock these other sentient spheres off of a platform that constantly keeps tilting in multiple directions. It starts out pretty fun, as you have to think about how Pac-Man's collision will knock the spheres off of the edges, while sometimes shooting stars will break holes in the sides. Eventually, you'll have giant spheres that are so big that you need power-ups in order to knock them off, and then eventually there's boss battles, and the game just gradually gets more and more frustrating, as it almost seems like it's mandatory that you have power-ups at times, except that you don't get them right away. You have to find them lying around on the stage, and then the next level, level it'll ask you if you want to power yourself up. Now you can choose, oh heck yeah, I'm going to use my power-ups right away, but then have none for a boss battle, or you can stockpile them so that you can power up all of your categories. Now there's three categories of attributes that Pac-Man can level up. Power, which increases how much damage he does as well as how much knockback he gives. Jump, which gives him the ability to jump. And Charge, which gives him the ability to charge. It, it's honestly really straightforward and I really like it a lot. 
I just wish that the game allowed more creative solutions for those that didn't have power-ups. And also if it was a little bit less annoying, as it's a very loud and obnoxious game, and <laughs> I definitely hope it doesn't an annoy you guys too much, because I usually like showing off the soundtracks in my footage, so apologies in advance if that happens. Pack and Roll Remix is another carryover from Namco Museum Remix. Pack and Roll was originally a DS game where you would constantly swipe the stylus on the touchscreen to keep moving up momentum so that Pac-Man could roll along the stage, and you'd also tap him to make him stop in his tracks. Then, the version on the Wii replaced the stylus controls with tilt controls with the Wii Remote. Now that it's on Namco Museum, or Pac-Man Museum Plus, now you just use regular stick controls, which I feel like is kind of not that great. Like, on the DS it was as annoying as heck. On the Wii I didn't even bother trying it, but here it feels like I just can't get Pac-Man to be at the speed or the angle I want. Maybe it's because the camera is really weird. At least you can actually control the camera. I don't think you actually could in the DS version. You get various power-ups to give Pac-Man different abilities, like being able to go underwater or being able to fly farther, and your main objective is to collect enough dots to get past the Golvis gates, which then allows you to get to the goalpost. Now, the weird thing about this remix is that it doesn't actually have the opening cutscenes that the DS version has. You'd think they'd like take this opportunity to remaster the story and like tell it with better graphics, but I guess they wanted to just get straight to the point. Honestly, if you're a huge fan of Pack and Roll, you might enjoy this re-release, as it does look a lot better, but honestly, I've never been a huge fan of Super Monkey Ball games, and this one is just another one that I can say, eh, I'll pass on. I'm really surprised that I hadn't even heard of this game before playing this collection, but Pac-Man Battle Royale is an experience where you have a much smaller version of the traditional maze, and you fight with up to three other Pac-Men, which can be controlled by humans, and you collect enough Pac dots to make a fruit appear, and then after you eat the fruit, then another arrangement of Pac dots and power pellets will appear. Once you grab the pellet, you become big, and then you can eat not only the ghosts, but the other opponent. However, when neither of you has the power pellet, you can bump into each other to give a little bit of a knockback effect. So you could potentially use this strategically to knock your opponent into a ghost, or to push him or her away from the power pellet. I wasn't able to test this in multiplayer, again, for obvious reasons, but this sounds like it would be a blast to play with friends, and I would definitely love it if I could grab some buddies of mine and just say, hey, let's play a Pac-Man survival game that's not Pac-Man 99. So in single player, it's kind of boring. All you really do is just try to get the most out of five rounds. So it's definitely intended for multiplayer first and foremost. It's also an arcade game, so it has the usual frustration of putting in coins, but at least it's one of the better arcade games in this collection. The final game in the collection is Pac-Man 256, which amazes me that I hadn't heard about this until now, as this is probably my second favorite game in the whole collection, and I almost wanted to 100% it, but I held off because, again, not much of a completionist. It's the usual Pac-Man trope of eating as many dots as possible, but this time you challenge yourself to try to survive as long as possible because you're constantly moving upward to get away from a glitch that seems surprising surprisingly out of place in the Pac-Man universe, all the while avoiding ghosts and collecting power-ups to offset the ghosts, as well as collecting power cubes to increase the durability of the power-ups. Now the reason why it's called Pac-Man 256 is because the game keeps track of how many pellets you eat in a row without turning around or getting to a blank spot on the map. And if you happen to get a chain of 256, then you trigger a massive explosion. I never got this to happen because it's harder than you think to eat that many pellets in a row, especially when you have to contend with ghosts. But this game is very exhilarating in that it's one of those high score grabbers. And surprisingly, it's not an arcade game, which means you can just keep plowing away over and over again. 
and it has surprisingly good replay value for a game like this, as you'll collect coins scattered across the field, and sometimes the game will give you missions that'll give you several coins at once, and you use those coins to upgrade the various items, and then as you continue collecting dots, then you'll unlock more power-ups that you can use on the map. Now you can only choose three power-ups at a time with the upcoming power-up occasionally appearing to give you a little bit of a preview. So it's neat that you can like customize your arsenal of how you want to attack the ghosts. And of course there's still power pellets because you know what, what's a Pac-Man game without power pellets unless if it's Pac and Pal. This is so much fun to try to see how far I can get and how much I can outsmart the ghosts and see if maybe luck will be on my side and I won't have to deal with any random shenanigans. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comment section if I missed anything and which of these games in the collection is your favorite if you're a huge Pac-Man fan. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!